Welcome to Camden Arts Centre. My name is Martin Clark and I'm the director here. We, like many other cultural institutions in London and the UK, have had to close our doors because of the coronavirus outbreak. So we wanted to take the opportunity to do a special walkthrough of Vivian Souter's exhibition, Tintin's Sofa. It closes in two weeks. We're worried we're not going to be able to open it again. So instead, I'm going to take you through the galleries. We're going to look at the exhibition and we're going to talk a little bit about Vivian, her life, and her work. So Vivian was born in Argentina, but she grew up in Switzerland. And through the 70s, she was part of a really burgeoning art scene. But she made the very conscious decision at the end of the 70s to remove herself from the art world. She was traveling through Mexico. She went into Guatemala, and she came across an extraordinary lake, Lake Atitlan. She fell in love both with the place and with a person, as she puts it, and she decided to settle there. She bought a former coffee plantation, and she built a home, and she's lived there on the shores of Lake Atitlan for over 30 years now. And it's taken that long, in a way, for the art world to rediscover Vivian and to catch up with her. I remember her saying to me that 20 odd years ago when she said she was removing herself and she was going to live in this very remote place and, and paint from nature, um, nobody could quite believe it. But now, in a way, it feels like one of the most appropriate things you could do. Vivian paints in the jungle. She has a number of kind of spaces, but also she paints outside amongst the trees. She also leaves the canvases in the jungle to sort of absorb and to soak up the traces of the wildlife, the vegetation, the, the atmospherics really. It's a place of extremes. And actually, one of the starting points for the way that Vivian began to work a number of years ago was a huge flood that happened in 2005. Her studio was completely washed away. The works were covered in water and mud. And she thought at that time that she'd lost everything. But slowly, as she recovered the works and she hung them up to dry, she saw a kind of beauty emerging from these canvases that had been submerged and watermarked and covered in mud and debris and twigs and leaves and the other kind of detritus of the forest and nature. And it was then that she decided that rather than working against those forces in her work, she wanted to embrace them. She began leaving the canvases outside for extended periods of time, sometimes even burying them in the ground. She would leave them for a couple of weeks. So whilst the paintings themselves are a kind of record of Vivian's interaction and relationship with the life of the forest, the gestures, the marks, that take on an almost organic quality, they're also very literally imprinted with the traces of that place. So many of them have this very weathered quality, but some of them actually physically have little bits of twig or leaf embedded into the surface what strikes you first, before you even start to look at the individual paintings themselves, is just this kind of cacophony of colour and form and gesture and brushstroke. And the way that she's begun over the last few years to install these paintings has really become as important as the making of the paintings themselves, I think. So whilst we can sort of zoom in and focus on individual canvases, she then begins to collage them in space to form what really is another kind of incredibly dense environment and one that is like the feeling of being in a forest or in a jungle. You get these kind of very particular sight lines, canvases are hung at different heights and obscure other works, and the sound is really, really very particular. There's the smell and the sound, like normally this gallery is quite a large echoey space, but the canvases produce a sort of silence, a softness, which is very like that of being in a forest or a wood. So through these kind of specifically kind of cultural objects, these paintings, she evokes a space that's close to the, the environment and the nature that they come out of. When she was here, all of these paintings arrived and it was extraordinary to watch her install the exhibition. The paintings can hang portrait, they can hang landscape, they can hang upside down. There is no right way round or upside down. Many of them are painted on both sides. And even when they're not, because of the way that she hangs them, you have this view of them as these kind of objects hanging in space. So the way that this installation emerged was entirely improvised. So she would take a painting out, she would, we would hold it up with our technicians, and then she would take another one out, 
hold it in front, flip it over, try it upside down, move it backwards, forwards, up and down in the space. When she was happy, we would hang it, and then she would move to the next one. So the whole installation grew in this very natural way. They become a kind of collage, a three-dimensional collage in space, and the paintings then become parts of a much greater whole. In her studio, Vivian will store her works like this. So when she's finished them, she'll often hang them on these kind of racking systems. And so a few years ago, she began to replicate this device as a way of showing the works in galleries. And again, the rack kind of produces these very beautiful relationships and these interact interactions as you sort of, you're forced to sort of move around and, 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 and move your eye through this structure and, you know, parts of the canvas emerge. It's interesting, some of the visitors have said that they're, they're sort of frustrated because often, you know, one work will ob obscure another canvas. But for her, that feels entirely in keeping with the way that the works were both made, but then the way she treats them and thinks about them afterwards. And that's very obvious on a work like this as well, where, again, this is three canvases that all traveled separately and could well have been shown by Vivian before in very different configuration. Maybe they were hanging individually, either against the wall or from the ceiling. But when she saw them in the galleries here, she started to collage them one on top of the other. And then she asked us to pin them very simply onto this wooden baton. So essentially, she created this kind of larger painting out of these kind of three different elements. Some of the paintings are hung against the wall. Some are pinned directly into the ceiling. Others hang on these cables in the space, creating this sort of almost sculptural environment. And as you move through, the view is constantly shifting. The paintings are kind of opening their faces and becoming kind of more oblique or concealed or obscured. But she also wanted to install these piles of paintings on the floor. And again, this is something that she will do in the studio. She thinks of them almost as carpets or, or, or rugs. It becomes another way of bringing these paintings into play in the exhibition. You only really see the face of the painting on top, but you're aware of all of these other canvases, all of these other moments. Vivian will usually make these paintings in one take. She, makes, um, she might make more than one a day, but she very rarely goes back to a painting once she's, um, once she's left it. So in a way, they become these sort of traces of a very physical relationship with time and with space and with what she was thinking and feeling and the place on that day. And it feels to me that although you can't see these canvases, you can't see the paintings, somehow I feel like they're still holding all of that concentrated time and um, yeah, somehow kind of holding it and releasing it back into the space and the exhibition. So normally a painter will stretch the canvas onto a wooden frame and Vivian will do that. She paints the canvases on these frames. When she's finished the painting, she takes them off and that's why you get these kind of, you know, the, the paintings return to this much more kind of organic, physical sense. They become much more like objects and they have, I think, a relationship with textiles and they also lose that illusionary quality. So a lot of the time when we think about this sort of history of painting in the West, it's about this kind of idea of a window and an illusionary window to represent something. So whilst that happens in the first stage of Vivian making these paintings, she then sort of takes them off that stretcher and lets them return back to something that's much more natural and something much more primitive and raw and organic. There is always this kind of push and pull between kind of culture and nature. And so perhaps what these paintings all represent is that moment where something's kept in balance between those two things. And again, it's interesting when people walk through, they look at paintings and they can make relationships and associations with all different kinds of painters over the last 100, 150 years. Some more figurative, uh, this wonderful painting of this tree, which evokes a kind of, my sort of German expressionism or, or sort of uh, kind of mid 20th century um, figurative expressionism through to you know, much, much more reduced. I mean, a 
painting like this, which is, you know, almost nothing there, you know, really reduced to almost the monochrome. So all of those references are in the work, but then by taking them off those stretchers and allowing them to then go back out into the forest, she allows them to take on a much more timeless, perhaps more sort of primal, natural quality. So for all of the sort of incredible, exuberant sort of play with colour and form and brushstroke and mark, you see it in a painting like this, this kind of beautiful black arching stroke with the red coming in. It's a highly sort of refined, immediate kind of abstraction, which again, we'd be so familiar with from the sort of history of, of Western painting. But many of the works also do have this figuration. There's one just up in the corner here. It's a little sketch of one of Vivian's dogs. And I talked a bit about this relationship with the place, with the environment, with the plants, with the forest. But Vivian also lives with a number of dogs who are her constant companions in the studio and who become both the subjects of some of these paintings, but who also will interact with the paintings as well. And the exhibition's called Tintin Sofa. And one of her dogs is called Tintin. And when she's working in the studio, as I say, she'll often have paintings piled on the floor, hung in racks above her. But the dogs will walk across the paintings, they'll sit on them, and Tintin in particular found a spot in the studio and a painting which he particularly loved. And, uh, and he started to adopt, and so she called this painting Tintin's Sofa. Um, and we've got it in the other room, so should we should go and have a little look. So this is Tintin's sofa, this red and yellow painting, which is actually made up of two canvases, laid one on top of the other. And then Vivian's installed it here again as a kind of carpet or a rug almost in the center of the room. And you can actually see the paw prints here on the canvas underneath where Tintin's been padding in from the muddy outside and has walked across and would spend his time sitting on this painting. The works in here, you carry on the, the, the atmosphere from Gallery One, but this space is a little bit more vaulted and it has these wonderful skylights which have these kind of Venetian blinds on them. And when Vivian saw this space, I think she wanted to use the height, but she was also really interested in the quality of these windows and the way that the light from the outside, but also these kind of glimpses of views were captured and filtered through. And I guess for her, they evoke something about her own studio, which again is open to the elements, but has these kind of slatted windows. So as you get to the back of the room, there are these wonderful paintings that she's hung very much in dialogue with the space here. So you can see both of these works, are paintings of these kind of windows in her studio, these kind of slatted open windows, and she's allowed them to sort of move up to these Venetian blinds and the windows in this gallery space. Next to them, there's this beautiful, dark, black, monochromatic work, which again, at first view, might look entirely abstract, but as soon as you know about the lake that she lives on, the volcano behind, you can see it as this extraordinary evocation of, of that place and the reflection, the water, the forest, the jungle, the light. So there's also a sense as you leave the spaces of excess and, and uncontainability and growth as you move through and you have to kind of duck your way through and then finally negotiate these last works as you, you leave the sort of incredible atmosphere of that environment that she's created and, yeah, come back to the architecture of the gallery somehow. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed our virtual walk through Vivian Souter's exhibition. There's much more information on Vivian's show on our website at Camden Arts Centre. Um, there's also an interview where the artist talks about her work, her life, and the process of installing it here in the galleries. So please do visit the website, and we look forward to seeing you back here once we're open again.